Broadcast is now starting. Everybody All mute. attendees are in listen only mode. Alrighty. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on what part of the uh, country or the world you're in. Uh, my name is Joseph Ladner. I'm an engineering performance advisor here at Technical Toolboxes. Some of you uh, may already know me or have had discussions with me in the past. Uh, for the ones of you that have not, uh, pleasure to have you all on today virtually for our, uh, I guess you could call it our part two or phase two of our horizontal directional drilling webinar. Um, last Tuesday, we had the technical side or focus of the webinar, which is with our um, in-house subject matter expert, David Willoughby. We discussed uh, some steel pipe applications, um, but uh, most of it pertained to polyethylene or plastic pipe applications related to horizontal directional drilling. Well, during that webinar, for uh, the ones of you that attended, I would assume most of you did, um, because we did refine this webinar to the ones that attended that, unless, of course, you forwarded it around the invite, which is okay. Um, uh, we did uh, mention a couple times the, the horizontal directional drilling power tool and the capabilities to it. So that's what this webinar is going to be focused on, everyone. <clears throat> um, strictly, it's going to be related to our horizontal directional drilling power tool, which is our full... Um, design and design validation program regarding horizontal directional drilling. Uh, this application, ladies and gentlemen, is for um, operators, for design validation, engineering service providers, consultants or firms for full engineering, or even a drilling contractor um, as well who's going to be initiating the actual construction or drill for an HDD. We, uh, this tool covers all facets, all different markets within horizontal directional drilling, and uh, that is what we are going to cover today. Here with me, I also have Joe Pikus. Uh, some of you probably know uh, Joe. Joe is one of our many uh, in-house SMEs. Uh, Joe is our pipeline engineering SME and uh, has previously worked uh, in the industry at Williams, Transco, et cetera has over 50 years of experience in pipeline uh, um, uh, engineering. So rest assured, if technical questions come up, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Mr. Pikus will be able to step in as well. And then we also have Stephen Sainz, um, who is one of our account managers here at Technical Toolboxes, and will be helping to monitor the chat and questions bar throughout. And uh, we want to make sure we try to address all and any questions during this webinar. I will stop periodically here and there if there's any questions. Uh, maybe about once or twice during the webinar. And then at the end, we're gonna to try to save five to 10 minutes for questions. If your question is not addressed during this webinar, ladies and gentlemen, we will have that recorded and we'll make sure to follow up with you as soon as possible uh, to address your question. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna dive into the software here in a little bit, but uh, feel free as you have questions, please submit them in the question bar. Um, you know, If we don't get to it right away, we will, try to address your question towards kind of designated stops. Uh, we want to make sure we try to cover everything. So again, like I said, if we don't address your question, we will get back to you. Um, so uh, for the ones of you that have joined today, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, our horizontal directional drilling power tool is an application that is embedded within our hub uh, platform, or our pipeline hub platform. Um, I don't know how many of y'all are on the hub. If you do, you're probably very familiar with the interface that you're seeing right now, which is a blue ribbon up top with a blank white canvas. Um, for the ones of you who are not on the hub, um, I'm not going to spend hardly any time talking about the hub today just because of time constraints, but the hub itself is uh, an integrated data environment from an IT perspective, from an engineering perspective. It's an integrated data platform that houses many different of our, our applications we license here at Technical Toolboxes, and the hub itself comes with many benefits. It's available as a cloud platform, as a desktop install platform. Um, it has collaborative capabilities, so if you have multiple users, say, using horizontal directional drilling. You can share your cases, analyses, and, and designs amongst your, your colleagues and peers there within your organization. Uh, it's a long-winded story of saying there's a lot of benefits that come just within the hub itself. Um, but today, we're going to spend most of our time focusing on HD Power Tool. If there are questions in regards to the hub or any of these other applications you see up here, pipeline toolbox, R-string, AC mitigation, hydro test power tool, you name it. Um, I am going to kind of deflect on those questions today, but please note 
your question will be noted and we can follow up with you at a later point. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna dive into the horizontal directional drilling power tool. And I'm gonna kind of start off with a little bit of background on this program. So <clears throat> our subject matter expert in this area is Mr. Uh, David Willoughby. I'm just gonna simply Google Mr. Willoughby and uh, his book by McGraw Hill. I don't know how many of y'all have seen this book um, who have read it before or whatnot, but the reason I bring this up is this one, this is a phenomenal read. For anyone that is an HDD expert, for anyone that uh, just wants to learn more about horizontal directional drilling, I literally have this sitting to the right of my desk right now and I've read it from, uh, from cover to cover, uh, front to back twice. That's no kidding. Um, it's a phenomenal read. It's a very easy to read and I highly recommend it. Uh, we don't get any kickbacks for this. This is just a one professional to another. Um, uh, this is an awesome read for horizontal directional drilling. And the reason why I start there is probably about 70 to 80 percent of the calculations that are derived from our HDD power tool can be found within this book. It's an industry known, industry wide application and book for horizontal directional drilling. And um, any of the analyses within our software, as I mentioned, can be found here. So we partnered with David Willoughby a number of years ago, um, the US Army Corps of Engineers Research Institute and some several strategic operators and engineering service firms. Some of you may even be on this call um, uh, to roll this application out to the industry <laughs> excuse me um in conjunction with that you know uh with uh obviously prci as well so um th this application covers a lot of different areas of horizontal directional drilling and is vastly different from what you're going to find in pipeline toolbox within hd light or even the hdd toolbox um that has been out for quite some time so uh, the horizontal directional drilling power tool, when you kind of hover over this application, for one, some of you that have either been on the hub, and if you haven't, there are six different modules uh, or six different, uh, you can call them modules, applications that are found within the horizontal directional drilling power tool. I'm going to spend most of my time today, ladies and gentlemen, about 95% actually, within the plastic pipe module, steel pipe module, and hydraulic fracture analysis. Um, but there are other modules in here, such as determining your drilling fluid requirements, such as the amount of uh, drilling mud you're going to need uh, for your pilot hole drill, your pre-reaming, your pullback, uh, you name it, how much drilling fluid is going to be consumed, how much water is going to be consumed, etc. Some other analyses available for you here for pump sizing, for duplex, triplex pumps, frictional pressure losses in your annular space. And then also, I, I don't know if we have any civil engineers here or you know, people that are uh, in the business for designing um, HDDs for cables and conduits. Um, but we also have this module here as well where you can design your borehole path for cables and conduits, determine your jam ratios, clearance, uh, et cetera. And then you can also even go within this module module. And uh, if you're pulling a uh, dual or even, um, you know, uh, uh, three conduits at a given time within a, a singular conduit, uh, you can you can determine your jam ratios in that as well. So um, uh, just want to make sure y'all are aware of the other kind of modules in here. But uh, for the time today, I'm going to spend most of our time in the steel, plastic, and hydraulic fracture analysis. Um, so kind of diving into this a little bit further, uh, I'm going to start off, the first half is going to be within the steel and plastic pipe module that you see here, and then I'm going to go into the hydraulic fracture analysis. So uh, as I mentioned before, Mr. David Willoughby's book here, the, the, the steel and plastic module is where you're going to find a lot of his calculations and analyses. When you're running a report, you need to give it to an auditor, you need to give it to your client, you need to give it to the drilling contractor, and they ask you, hey, Mr. or Miss Engineer, um, where are you pulling this from? Oh, this is a technical toolbox. Okay, cool. So where does technical toolboxes pull their analyses from? Well, within the bottom of each and every report, we have a references section. I can show you this here in a little bit, where you can say, hey, they are pulling this from uh, you know, David Willoughby's McGraw Hill book that's been released, uh, you know, over 20 years ago. That's tried and true in the industry. So to add clout, add validity, so you know where the analyses are coming from. Um, also, 
in conjunction with the software, we have our user guides and manuals within our wiki side. Some of you, if you utilize our HD Power Tools, should have access to this and have seen it before. Um, but within our wiki site, you can see all of the analyses behind the calculations you're running as well, which of course, a lot of that comes from David's book. So if you ever need to reference that, that's, that, that is there too. So first and foremost, I'm gonna start within our steel pipe module. So um, you are able to calculate the pool force and insulation stresses um, for both steel pipe and plastic or polyethylene pipe with the HD power tool. Um, something you probably are all familiar with with either standard HD light, uh, you know, some of our competitors such as Borane, maybe you have some in-house um, spreadsheets, um, uh, you know, HD toolbox, whatever it may be. Um, but the, the HD power tool takes it to a, the next step, another level. And that's what I'm going to kind of go into. So I'm gonna put, click on steel pipe, pull force and uh, uh, installation stress for vertical plane. And uh, I'm gonna show you kind of the full capabilities to this program that really separates it from um, you know, others within the industry. Uh, so let me go into this. I'm gonna give you a pretty cool mock drill that was done for the Santa Fe River in Florida. So here are the kind of overall, this is the overall layout to the HDD uh, uh, steel pull force and stress analysis. Um, I'm not going to get into much of these, but as I said, one of the benefits of the hub is the, the collaborative capability. Um, this small icon, is, but a pretty powerful icon, uh, allows you to, let's say you're an engineer and you're working in your engineering firm and you want uh, another pair of eyes on your analysis before you send it out to the client. Um, you want your boss, your colleague to look at it. Maybe you're an operator and um, you know you uh, just got the HD design and report from your engineering uh, service provider that you contracted out and you're like, ah, I, I want to cross check this. I want to see what's going on here. But uh, I also want to run it by my colleague or my boss uh, before we kind of give the thumbs up. How, whatever scenario you want to do, the collaborative feature allows you to easily share your cases and information um, amongst your peers and colleagues there within your organization. So pretty cool. So kind of diving into the platform itself. So one of the big features of the HDD Power Tool is that it comes with a full-blown ArcGIS uh, interface that allows you to create your elevation profile. So I don't know how many of you get survey data uh, from a surveying vendor or maybe within your organization, but you're able to upload that uh, survey data in either a KML shape file or the Excel data Maybe you get it in a CSV format and you want to input it into Excel, you can do that as well. So what the software has the ability to do is you see this gray shaded area here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can, I can simply go to import, go here, um, and uh, let's see if I go back into my folders, I'm going to go to Google Earth Pro. And if I went to Santa Fe River Crossing, I click that. And if I clicked uh, here, I would go through a very <coughs> excuse me, simple process. Uh, by finding my drill via KML or shapefile. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I don't want to uh, mess up my current profile I have, but I would choose the entrance. I would choose which point want, I want to be my entrance side, and then the other side will be designated as obviously the exit point. I would go through that, click save, and then my elevation profile, this gray shaded area would show up here. Um, feedback that we've gotten on this is that it, it does a really good job at kind of showing you as the designer, or if you're doing your pull force stresses, you know, uh, everything in our industry is time and money. Uh, drill, trenchless technology can be complex, especially when you get into compound angles and bends. But uh, if you can reduce the amount of footage, uh, the amount of pipe that you need in your HDD, it's going to reduce the cost for you or your client. Um, and this shaded area, uploading your elevation profile can allow you to do that. It gives you a good visualization to see, you know, obviously here it's a little river of what we're gonna be drilling under. So that's the first thing. You're able to input your elevation profiles um, here accordingly. And I'm showing this to you all in the steel application, but the same thing can be applied to building out a plastic drill or cables and conduits. So um, uh, a little takeaway there as well. What we also have is uh, an embedded ArcGIS interface. So um, when you upload your KML or KMZ or shape file or uh, your Excel data, Obviously, you're probably gonna have your latitude and longitude information in there. You get a nice visual effect from an aerial point of view of where you're gonna be drilling from. See, we have this nice river here. If I even zoomed in, you can see 
kind of where the, uh, you know, the cleared out land was, where that uh, rig site was and where the exit was going to be for this particular drill. Um, so you also, <clears throat> you not only get a profile view, elevation profile, but you get the aerial view via GIS as well. So some really cool features. And when you run your report, ladies and gentlemen, you're not only going to get obviously your borehole profile, but you're also going to get the, uh, the elevation profile as well. Um, within the HGD power tool, if you live in a mountainous terrain or, um, you know, we're located out of Houston, Texas in the United States, Houston is very flat, <laughs> not much of an elevation change here, but, uh, even within Texas, the entry and exit points do tend to vary at times. And if you need to do that, you can do that very easily. Um, <clears throat> one aspect to, uh, that our software that we took a lot of time on, we took a lot of time to iron it out and, and to give you, the end user, much more flexibility is um, creating your borehole profile. So what do I mean by that? Right now, we have a complete borehole profile. And most, um, um, you know, internal uh, kind of processes that clients have right now, or even our competitors out there, you're forced to um, go through and design or create your whole borehole bore bore profile before knowing the stresses um, at each and every point along your drill. So A to B, B to C, et cetera. That is not the case with our software. One, when you make your borehole profile, you can easily go in, let's say if I'm in my horizontal section, C to D, I can easily go to this edit button here and change my parameters accordingly. Now, maybe I'm a maybe I'm a designer. Maybe I'm in the design stage of of my borehole. You haven't even maybe you haven't even gotten to CAD yet. Um, if you go in and I delete my section E to F, I'm just going to delete it. So I'm going to delete E to F and I'm going to click calculate. So um, let's pretend you saw my E to F just disappeared. Hopefully you all saw that. Um, you can see I now only have A to B, B to, B to C, C to D. DDE. Um, so maybe you're wanting to see how can I vary my exit angle. But before I do that, I want to know what my stresses are going to be. I don't want to go through and design my whole borehole profile and, uh, and then lo and behold, I have to change everything around again. So if I went and inputted all my pipe data, which I've done for y'all already, um, and then I go to my installation stresses and I click save, if you can see, I only have probably about 75% of my drill completed. I don't have my entry angle yet. And if I go to my installation stresses, I can go automatically to point E and see what my stresses are gonna look like. And as of right now, just uh, based on this drill, I kind of just threw together, <laughs> uh, I am failing in, in a couple areas. So, you know, this can mean a lot of different things and we won't necessarily go through that today, but what the software allows you to do is full custom ability. If I went and deleted this whole thing and we were just from A to B and then B to C, I could determine what my stresses are on those two sections before I even get to my, 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 uh, my horizontal path or before I even get to my curve and B to E. So it allows much more flexibility to determine your stresses as you go. You don't have to do your whole drill at once. And then also to take it a step further, maybe you've completed your drill. Maybe you've completed your whole borehole profile. Um, you go to, we'll, we'll complete this here real quick. We'll go to add new section, upslope. We'll make our angle eight degrees. We'll make our exit 20, excuse me. We'll go to save so we can get that in there. We'll go to calculate, okay? Uh, we now have that exit back in. So what you also have the ability to do is you can go to save as, ladies and gentlemen, and then I can, uh, you know, it, it defaults to copy, but if I just need to make revision after revision after revision, you can go to save as, and if I click save, it will very, very easily carbon copy and make that same drill that I just had and I can start working off of it again very, very easily. So you can do it a number of different ways, but we give you a lot, a lot of flexibility to go through here and design your borehole. Or if it's already designed, hey, you just reference that CAD file you have and you can input this very easily. Furthermore, during your pull force and installation stresses, um, which is a huge, uh, you know, uh, significance to our software is not only can you model your stresses on a vertical and horizontal plane or just a horizontal plane, you can also do compound angle and bends. You can determine what your pull force and installation stresses are going to be for both steel and polyethylene pipe for compound angles and bends. 
So um, what does this mean? A lot of you are probably even more knowledgeable in this than me. <laughs> but um, obviously, a compound angle in bend is, is this, the software is going to ask you, um, is it going to be a left or right turn um, horizontally or on your y-axis, essentially? And then you're going to put your vertical bend information there um, for you know more or less your x-axis. And then what the software is going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is do an auto calculation here for your combined angle. And it's going to do an, an aggregate or combined calculation for your, your uh, left or right turn and then your vertical bend, combine this together. And if I went through and did that quick analysis for you, it would populate here and it would show, okay, this is a compound bend. Instead of a curved, it would say compound. And then more importantly than that, it's obviously going to designate it on here two-dimensionally. And it's going to show you how it's going to affect your stresses, how it's going to affect your pull loads and your stresses. Um, and you can have the ability to do this again, ladies and gentlemen, not only in the steel module, but the plastic module as well. So um, kind of a recap here. You have full custom ability um, when you are designing your drill to do it section by section. You have the ability to do as many or limited sections as need be. You can input survey data via shape, shape files, KML files, Excel data to create your elevation profile. You have an ArcGIS overlay um, that you can see here, um, which uh, the profile shows up in your reports. You can do compound angles and bends. Um, if your horizontal section has, uh, you know, a, um, you can can go look in here. You, if you have a uh, a straight section that has an upslope or downslope, you can put that degree angle in here as well. So a lot of capabilities here when you're calculating your pull force and installation stresses. Um, I'm going to go through this tab just a little quickly, but um, this is all where you enter a lot of your pipe data. Um, we have a lot of pipe directives for you to choose from, ladies and gentlemen. We have embedded um, pipe directives <laughs> for uh, standard steel, API 5L, and B36 steel. We have a lot of different embedded pipe directives there for you to easily and quickly drop down menus to choose your OD, your smice, your grade, etc. But rest assured, you can see this one's rather large, <laughs> like 80 inches. I think we we're just kind of messing around with this one. Uh, but you can see when you go to, if you uh, go to custom pipe, you have the ability to just type this information in here accordingly. Um, something that's also pretty cool is measuring the buoyancy effects of your drill. So obviously, you're going to see this a lot more in polyethylene drills. You're going to want to weight that pipe up with water, but uh, um, you have the ability to do and measure the buoyancy effects in both steel and plastic pipes. So how do you do that is, is, is your pipe going to be filled with water? Yes or no? So if I go to yes, let's go to a percentage. Looks like this got off a little bit, uh, but you have the ability to measure the buoyancy effects if you fill that pipe up with water 100% or if it's 50%, or if it's 65, whatever it may be, anything between zero and 100. Um, um, how much water are you going to fill that pipe up with and what are the buoyancy effects going to be relative to your pull loads and stresses? So uh, another application that's available here in the power tool. Additionally, you know, more times than not, uh, you know, I've been out on many of HDD sites and, you know, obviously you're going to have a number of times where um, you know, what is your, what is your pipe above ground roller section? And so I, you have the ability to check yes or no on that. And then if I kind of put what my degree angle it's going to go in, it's going to be 50 feet. Um, I can do that. Cantonary bend radius, let's just do 20 feet. And it will enable this schematic for you. If I click calculate this schematic, these values will change. And it's going to let you know as the operator, engineer, drilling contractor, what my height of my cantonary bend needs to be and then what the length needs to be as well. Um, so this is another, uh, you know, good application or just another, another good uh, uh, analysis that comes with the HGD power tool. Um, and then last but not least, when you go to your installation stresses and I run this report, um, you're gonna get a very nice robust reporting capability. Um, this will probably take just a couple seconds to run. Um, um, that's going to have everything on here for you. It's going to have the elevation profile, your borehole path, um, all of your pipe input data, and then also it's going to show you your pass and fail results. Um, my my Wi-Fi here was a little spotty. This should be much quicker than it is right now, so I, I apologize if it's taking a little longer than need be. Um, 
but as this is kind of rolling through, I'm going to kind of go to the next uh, part of the, the software. And, and mind you, this is just going to kind of keep loading. Um, for the other aspects of the software, I have the reports already made. I was a little feel fearful of the of the Wi-Fi situation, and it, I did get caught on that. So I, I apologize. Um, I am going to spend a little bit of time in uh, plastic pipe here for a little bit. And then once I'm done with this, we'll kind of be at the halfway point of uh, what I want to cover in the webinar. And I'll stop for questions for the steel and plastic applications. And then I'm going to go into the hydraulic fracture analysis. And if y'all don't mind, I'm actually going to reset my browser here. I really do apologize about this. I think my, my Wi-Fi is being a little hairy. The uh, perks of uh, working from, from home or office and vice versa. So I'm going to pull everything back up. Um, I do have some other reports to show y'all. So uh, I actually saw a lot cooler reports than the one I was going to show. So let me uh, just kind of move forward with things. Apologize about that. So what I'm going to go to now is plastic pipe, um, specific radius of curvature. <clears throat> so a question we get a lot, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is can the software handle bundled piping? I mean, we get that all the time. The answer to that question is yes, especially when you marry it with our report builder. So right now I'm in a polyethylene HDD application. Um, <clears throat> If you ever take one of our classes with David Willoughby, um, he says for a uh, plastic situation, polyethylene, uh, the number one or two question he usually gets asked is usually something related to buoyancy effects or um, how do we handle bundled applications or how do we handle bundled drills? Um, if they're all being pulled simultaneously, you just multiply your, your pull forces by the number of pipes that you're pulling. Um, but can the software handle that? And uh, being paired with our report builder, it can. So as you see, I have open just kind of example here, uh, country road crossing. Um, um, this is the layout for uh, polyethylene pipe, pull force and insulation stresses. You can see the interface is very similar. If I wanted to go through and add a, um, uh, add a shape file to show that two dimensional overlay, I can go through that right now. Uh, but I don't really have one at the moment to match this drill. So if I inputted one, it would, everything would come out a little wonky. Um, and you can see uh, as well, if I went through and I'll show you the same thing for plastic, um, I'm going to delete it all the way to the curve from A to C. And if I went to calculate, I should calculate. And uh, you see right now it's just showing me the profile completely changed um, from A to C. And then if I went to my top tab here, ladies and gentlemen, and then if I went to calculate, um, it's now showing my you know, showing me the axle uh, stresses um, uh, for for A, B, and C. If I went through and made the rest of my drill, um, it would um, it would show me points E, uh, you know D, E, F, however many there are. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, again, uh, kind of back to the custom ability on this. So um, the interface on this is, is very similar. You have the uh, capability to fill the pipe of water. What are the effects of that going to be, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> now, what I wanted to do is show you this. And uh, this was actually an example we did for a client. So mind you, the red spots here that are kind of uh, you know, bubbling out or, or, or not showing, um, you know, who the particular client was for this. So mind you on that, I apologize for any unprofessionalism there, but we want to be mindful of the things we show. But nonetheless, this is an example report that we can generate when the HD Power Tool is paired with our report builder, specifically for a polyethylene bundled situation. So you see right here, the report builder allows you to um, add a photo. It looks like it's supposed to be for, um, you know, conduits or polyethylene drills, um, but there's only showing three in this picture. But you're allowed to take a cover page. You get to put notes in your summary here. And then you get to have a table of contents. Of course, that just shows you all the different drills. This particular bundled pipe application is for. So what the software allows you to do is to create an executive summary page with the results, obviously, what your pull force and stresses are going to be for one pipe, and then what your pull loads are going to be for all four. And then the, res and then the report will then go into what was my um, pull forces for each of the four 
pipes and this particular bundled application. So if I went back to the software, um, you can see here, if I go back to drill path and borehole design, this was a bundled pipe application for four, one, two, three, four for this country road crossing. And if I go to my report, I have, um, I have the borehole profile and the stresses for each and every one of the four drills along the entire borehole path. And uh, you can see as I scroll down, I mentioned earlier, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the references section will tell you where the calculations are pulled from. This is from David Willoughby's book, McGraw Hill. Wanted to make sure you were aware of that. And then as I scroll up, my executive summary that I created will show you. Here are the results for one of the four pipes, and then you can see the results for all four. Um, so again, marrying the report builder capability with the HGD power tool gives you give much, much, much more flexibility when doing a, you know, a specific radius of curvature calculation, which allows you to calculate the stresses for bundled piping for, uh, for plastic, for polyethylene. Um, so I want to do a quick pause here. Um, we're at the half hour. Uh, I want to spend at least 15 to 20 minutes on the hydraulic fracture analysis, and then we can use the remaining time after that to answer questions. And I can even loop in Joe Pikus from a technical standpoint. But are there maybe one to two questions that I could answer right now? Um, Stephen, I don't know if we have any. Uh... Yeah, we have a couple. So the first okay. question is, what is the difference between HDD tab and PLTBG HDD steel plastic tab? Ah, okay. Very good question. I apologize for not covering that a little better earlier. So the HGD tab up here, ladies and gentlemen, is our HGD power tool. This is our HGD power tool. This is our full-blown design validation program for horizontal directional drilling. So what comes with this as opposed to HD light? Well, it's a lot. It's a ton. <laughs> HD light steel and HD light plastic for both PLTB gas and liquids are pretty much only going to allow you to calculate your pull force and insulation stresses on a vertical plane only. I know it even says horizontal plane, um, but uh, you are limited to building out your borehole in five sections with an HD light. So a lot of times when you incorporate a horizontal plane, you gotta have more than five sections and then boom, the software doesn't allow you to do that. So with an HD light, just kind of the takeaway for both steel and plastic needs to be, you are only able to calculate your pull force and installation stresses on a vertical plane only. You are confined to building out your borehole profile to five sections. It does not have an embedded ArcGIS interface. It does not allow you to import your survey data or your KML or shape file to create a, um, a, a two-dimensional elevation profile. Um, it does not come with the hydraulic fracture analysis. If you have cables and conduits that you need to model, it does not come with that. It does not come with the ability to calculate your drilling fluid and mud uh, requirements. Um, it does not have the aerial ArcGIS interface. Um, it also doesn't uh, give you the ability to um, uh, calculate the stresses uh, at one point amongst the others. So, you know, to do your A, B, as more of a designer, see what your stresses are, et cetera. Um, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, at the end of the day, there's a little bit more than that. The reporting capabilities are more enhanced in the HD power tool as well. But the takeaway here needs to be for pipeline toolbox, gas, and liquid, um, HD light is only, on, it's, it's just a calculator. It is a calculator that is a quick calc um, that allows you to calculate your pull force stresses on a vertical plane only for both steel and plastic. Hopefully that addressed the question. Um, is there another one I could I could uh, answer, Stephen? Yes. Uh, so this is a two-part question. First part, with okay. compound curves, how is that information imported from the KMZ? Second part is, is the KMZ import, on, on, uh, import only for the profile generation? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to start with the second question. And Joe Pikus might be able to chime in there. But the second part of the question is probably gonna answer the first part of the question. So I'm gonna go back to HDD steel and kind of show you this here. Um, looks like I already have it open. Um, let's see, go for us. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. All right, so one thing I want the takeaway to be here is, is that on your elevation profile 
and how you create this is going to be from a KML, KMZ, uh, shapefile, you name it. This has no effect on your borehole itself, zero. So compound angles and bends, entry exits, horizontal, vertical, et cetera, has zero effect on it. Um, what, the, what importing a KML or KMZ file allows you to do is just to create your elevation profile which is the gray shaded area here, area here, which is, you know, obviously essentially your two dimensional topography and what you're going to be drilling under. So in regards to the question back to the compound angle and bend, um, creating that has, it, it's not related to the KML or KMZ file. Now I'll give everyone a little bit of a tidbit as what's to come for HD power tool. We are throwing a lot of research and development into this. Um, we are constantly updating it. We rolled out an update uh, last week. Uh, uh, mind you, some of you, if you're if you're able to use it now, probably saw it. Um, so what I'm getting at is, is we get we've gotten a lot of feedback that users are like, hey, um, if I have the raw CAD file in DWG in a DWG format or file, would this software allow me to upload the CAD file to create my elevation profile and maybe even auto populate or create my um, angles and distances? Uh, you know, auto populate and create my borehole and auto populate the angles, distances, etc. And then also, if there's a compound angle and band, it would recognize it. So, that is what's to come. Um, we are working through that with our developers right now. We have a lot of example CAD files. It is something that is in our roadmap, it is in the very initial uh, design phases. It's going to take a lot on our end, but that is in our roadmap to uh, provide the ability for you to upload CAD files in DWG format to auto-populate your borehole profile so you don't have to input all that in simultaneously with your, uh, with your shape file. So hopefully that addressed your question, but as of right now, uploading a KMZ or shape file has no effect on your compound angle and bend. It just creates the uh, two-dimensional elevation profile. To create a compound angle and bend, you would have to go to your add new sections. And if I went to compound, you see your section, and then you would have to manually type that information here. It auto calculates your your combined angle, but you do have to manually type that in. All right. Um, was there a, any other questions, Steve? Nope, that's all the questions right now. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do? Uh, very good questions. Very good questions, and uh, um, hopefully. Uh, you know, give you a little sneak peek or tidbit on what's to come with the power tool because we're, we uh, look, guys and gals, we're a software company at heart. We have some incredible SMEs and partnerships with um, actually some operators throughout uh, North America. And uh, we're throwing a lot of stuff at this to continuously making it better. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it's, a, it's, 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 it's the best in the business right now for horizontal directional drilling software, um, but it's only going to get better. And having feedback and questions such as that only adds to um, what we're going to be enhancing uh, to this software here. So um, great question, but if you any if any of y'all have feedback on how you think this could get better, please, please, please let us know because we take that seriously. All right, I'm going to go to the hydraulic fracture analysis, the maximum and allowable minimum required mud pressure. And I'm going to spend uh, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes on this, and um, then I'm going to open up the floor to just general questions for everyone. And, um, you know, we can loop in Mr. Pikus if he wants to chime into anything as well. All right. So uh, I have now, <coughs> excuse me, switched to the hydraulic fracture analysis. Um, if you remember, I uh, was uh, showing you a mock kind of Santa Fe river crossing. I'm going to pull up a similar scenario with that. But how this software works is what you're going to do is you're going to create your borehole in either the plastic steel or cables and conduits module. You're going to give it a unique name. You're going to run through your calculations, et cetera. And if you want or need to do a hydraulic fracture analysis, you will then open up this module within the HGD power tool. And you have the ability to make this a single point or multi-point analysis. I'm going to be honest with everyone here, about 98% of the usage on this tool is within the multi-point analysis. Um, but if you ever just need to do a quick count with a single point, a single point of, uh, you know, soil properties in here, that is there for you, but we don't see much usage there. It's pretty much all in the multi-point. So what you're going to do first is you're going to want to bring in your elevation profile and the borehole that you previously made in one of those other three modules. 
And what we have is the select borehole definition within this drop down here. And if I just select Santa Fe Crossing mock drill, which is what I have up there, or crack out, sorry, uh, well, the mock drill is uh, uh, what I made previously. So that's what you would pull. And it would, if I click save, it would, it would auto populate the borehole and elevation profile that we pulled in in one of the other modules. That's, so that's what you would do first from a workflow standpoint. Um, I'm going to skip to the end here for about a minute, but then I'm going to kind of go back as to what this software allows you to do. So at the end of the day, what the software is creating for you is just borehole stability analysis. Um, so we have the Santa Fe River Crossing that you see here, which is going to give you the maximum allowable and minimum required mud pressures. Um, so as you can see here, as we're drilling, as we're fighting gravity on our drill, then going up, uh, go, going up and coming out of the hole, you can see our minimum required mud pressure is getting higher and higher. And uh, as you can see, the point at where the maximum and the minimum intersect is where you as the engineer probably need to be very mindful of where there could be a potential frack out. And then obviously, naturally, when you come out of the hole, there's going to be a natural frack out. And that's where you see the lines cross again. So we'll kind of work back towards how this graph is made here in a second. So the interface on this is actually pretty, pretty easy. Anything on the left-hand side, ladies and gentlemen, is your data input. Anything on the right-hand side is your data output or your results. So how does this software work? So um, you have your borehole profile here. You're going to be entering data points, soil data points at each and every point along your borehole profile that you see here. I can even kind of make some of the stuff go away. It's a very intuitive graph. And I can repopulate those here in a second. Um, so the software allows you to enter as many data points along your drill as need be. I think we've actually now have tested it up to 65 points and it worked very well. It's designed to be unlimited, um, but uh, at, at the very least to have a good, you know, somewhat accurate results, you, you at least need to have three. You need to have one kind of at the middle of your beginning of your drill, middle and end. But again, if you have 100 data points of um, soil types, by all means, have at it. Um, so how do you enter your soil information? We give you two ways to do that. So where these calculations are derived from is, I mentioned David Willoughby's book at the beginning. This one's a little bit different. Excuse me. So um, this comes uh, into play with our partnership with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer Research Institute. Within that, you have the DELT calculations. I'm sure some of you are very familiar with that, much more than myself. <laughs> um, within the DELT calculations, Geotechnics, I think it was from their late 90s, I believe. Um, there's the cavity expansion module. The cavity expansion module is where we derive the calculations from behind our analysis. So for some of you that are familiar with it, you are probably knowing exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you that are not, um, you know, we can talk about that further at a later time, set up another conversation, but you know, I encourage you to do some reading on it. Um, so long story short is, is we give you the ability to enter your soil data points in two different ways. You can see right here, I already have mine entered. I have 12 different quote unquote stations um, from a distance from the rig site. Um, but you can either do it manually, <coughs> excuse me, by adding a station by station or point by point along your drill. When you do this, uh, you simply go through, you uh, uh, type in your distance from the rig site, let's say 250 feet. And we have some embedded soil characteristics for you. I'm going to be honest with you all. I see most users clicking this box and just, you know, typing in the soil that they're going to be drilling through. You know, let's call it, uh, let's just say sandy gravel. I have that in there already. And then you're going to be entering the next four uh, data points are going to be uh, related to your soil properties. The angularity, the cohesion of the soil, shear modulus, unit weight, et cetera. We get a lot of questions. Joseph, Joe Picus, David Willoughby. Um, gosh, I'm not a geotech guy or gal. Where do I get this from? Where do I get this data? So what we're always going to tell you right away is try to get a geotech report. Try to get it from your operator or try to get it from, um, you know, someone doing a core sample. That is what it's always, always, always going to be most accurate. At the end of the day, this is software. Um, so what I mean by that is uh, your results are only as good as the data you input. But I completely understand we live in a world that, you know, everything's time and money and we don't always have that at our disposal. So, you know, if you do choose to adopt this HD software, we can, we can give you some maybe good 
pro tips, uh, user tips on maybe where you can get some good industry references for the soil you're drilling through. Um, you know, one thing that we recommend and that I, I've seen users use is the United States Soil Classification System. I do understand that the data relative to that is only good for a certain, you know, depth in the earth, um, but it is a good reference point to choose from. If you are, if you have nothing, you don't have a, a core sample, you don't have something from the geotech. Um, the United States Soil Classification System has a lot of very good online articles and archives of different ranges where you can find very good conservative variables for different parts of the country, such as the angularity of sandy gravel in California or or, or Edmonton, Canada, or you know here in Houston, whatever it may be. Um, so you're going to enter that in. And then you're going to enter the next four points are different points relative to um, your point of interest. So your point of interest is going to be this distance from the rig site at the depth of your drill. So, uh, you know, uh, 300 foot laterally and whatever the depth of your drill is, you're going to enter these um, uh, different distances here. And we provide you a really cool schematic to show you what that point of interest is and what the egg distance is accordingly to that. So um, when I go back into here, there's a lot of different information to enter, the distance from the rig side, uh, ground surface, height of the water table, height of the sanding water table. If you go on our schematic, we give all that for you. So if you can imagine this is your point of interest, look, here's your distance from the rig entry point, your first data point. Here's your height of sanding water table. I think that was your seventh. Height of water table at the point of interest. I think this is your sixth data point you need to enter, et cetera. You can see that's all here. So we give you a really good schematic to go with as well. Um, so that's the first way to do this. You can do this manually point by point, or we give you a way, and uh, I won't take the time to download it, but you can download an Excel template. I might have a sample here. No, that's not it, sorry. Um, you can download an Excel template that allows you to easily type this out via um, on Excel, uh, uh, long story short, and you save that Excel template on your computer and you go to this import feature. It's essentially this screen, but in Excel format, allows you to easily copy and paste, uh, edit data, et cetera. You go to import, and um, uh, you can import that here to this screen, and, it'll, and it will, boom, automatically or auto-populate all of this data within 10 seconds. Um, so you can do it manually, or you can download this to Excel, work on an Excel for a little bit, and then upload it that way. After that, you enter in your pilot hole information. So again, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is a frack out analysis. Where are you most susceptible to a frack out? It can happen anywhere, but it's your pilot hole drill. So that's what this frack out analysis is, is designed for. It's for your pilot hole drill. So at your pilot hole drill, um, you're going to want to enter in this information accordingly. Your borehole diameter. You'll hear from David Willoughby a lot if any of you have attended his uh, his uh, trainings. <laughs> you know, and I even went wrong here as well. Um, if you were, <laughs> excuse me, let's say you're drilling a, you know, 12 and three quarter inch hole. Don't put in 12 and three quarter inch for your pilot hole. I don't know if we have any drilling contractors here, any drillers, even the best of drillers have a very hard time drilling a perfect hole at 12 and three quarters. So round up to 13 inch, round up to 14 inch. If it's a 15 and a half, maybe make it a 16 inch bore hole, whatever it may be. Then you put in your drill pipe, your unit weight of the drilling fluid, et cetera, just a lot of other information according to your, your, um, your pilot hole, um, the viscosity of drilling fluid, uh, yield point, that is um, uh, your <laughs> viscosity is in centipoise, et cetera. Um, and, that, and that's your plastic viscosity, I believe. Um, and then with, during, if, if you adopt the software, we do give some good kind of industry references to go from if you don't know these, your unit weight of water. You enter all this information in, and you, if I click calculate, it would uh, provide me this borehole stability profile. And this is what you're generating at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, your min and max mud pressures. So what is this telling me? You know, here's our borehole profile right here in blue. Um, the minimum required mud pressure. Some of you probably know this obviously right away. I'll make this disappear. This is essentially telling me or telling the driller that they need to be drilling at a minimum pressure to get positive returns at their rig site. Um, if you are not at least drilling at this pressure, you might not, not even be getting positive returns. So you gotta be drilling at a minimum of this pressure right here at this distance from your drill. 
the red line that you see here is pretty self-explanatory. It's your maximum pressure that you're going to be drilling at. Um, what is this telling you? Based upon the data that you've entered in here and the cavity expansion module, if you are at, let's just say, a uh, thousand feet in your drill and you exceed, uh, it's an intuitive graph, so you can see 80, 88 PSI, we'll call it a, yeah, 88 PSI, roughly 90 PSI, there is a good chance, there is a good chance you could experience a frac out. And then as you go down, you see where these lines intersect. You're very susceptible to a frac out. Your minimum and maximum mud pressures are, I mean, they're the same essentially. And then at the end, but naturally when you come out of the hole, you'll have a natural frac out. Um, so this is the borehole stability analysis that uh, will pop out. And then of course, you are able to create a, um, a, uh, a, re a report and I struggle at clicking that because my Wi-Fi was kind of um, not running a report and now it's working. Hallelujah. Um, so we get a chart here um, where it shows all of the soil input data that we've entered. Here's our borehole stability analysis. And then you get the actual points of interest. What is the exact min and maximum uh, pressure that uh, uh, is going to be uh, that we have to be drilling at or cannot exceed at this distance from the rig. And then like anything, you see the references here at the bottom of where we pulled the calculations from the Delft Geotechnic Calculations and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer Research Institute. So that's the frack out analysis. Um, before we go to questions, um, and if you don't have anything, it's all good, Mr. Pikus, but is, is there anything, uh, you know, for maybe a minute, 60 seconds or two that you would like to add about this program that maybe if I glossed over? Uh, yeah, uh, one of the things, uh, I have a uh, sheet of uh, soil parameters that are typically used for, uh, I just want to give the, give them an idea of, of what, 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 you know, what the different uh, uh, lengths and depths, uh, how many different types of soil there are. I have, I have an example of uh, something I'll make you presenter, Joe. Okay, and I will uh, show it to them. Okay, I'll show my screen. I'm going to bring it over. It's because because we get a lot of questions on on soil borings and things of this nature, but but here's something. Uh, this is a design of soil <coughs> parameters on the north bank uh, of Oak Bayou. And um, and 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 one of the things that we run into is uh, just to give you an idea of the different depths um, and the different types of clay um, and so on and so forth uh, you you could see uh, you know the the, uh, the different weights uh, the different angles uh, and, it, and, it, and here we are just going down with different depths right here and you and it's pretty extensive um, so 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 you can see some of the um, um, issues that that you could have because Remember, the soils are not, um, they could undulate uh, down there. And, and that's why it's important to know where you're located and, and, and get, get the soil borings, you know, from your geotech people. So, so, so you understand that you have good information. When you run these calculations, you're going to begin to understand, oh, yeah, I, I should have been a little more careful on understanding all the types of soils that are down there, not just, just uh, one particular type or, or just a uh, handful, and and remember, uh, it's it's the it's the soil, it's it's the heaviest soil over over the borehole, and 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 usually that's the one you got to consider, uh, you know you know during these calculations. Uh, so I just want to point that out, how important that is because it's the total weight you know that's that's involved, but but really it's the, it's that heaviest soil right right above the borehole itself. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pikus. Um, what I would like to do now is uh, open up the floor to questions. So, um, Stephen, if uh, any more questions have come in, uh, either myself or Joe Pikus will uh, do our best to answer it. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, we have one question here, and it states Can the software work with custom pipe materials such as reinforced composite pipe consisting of several layers of various materials? 
second part of the question, those products would have to use custom inputs to describe their pro uh, properties such as axle stiffness, bending stiffness, et cetera, but they can still be uh, modeled. That's a great question. Um, what we would have to do is 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 get a, a table of those you know those specific type type properties and add them in there uh you know for for selection uh i'm i'm sure it can calculate it it's it's just that we don't have a variable input um for 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 something like that um and that would be a good enhancement that we could add um you know particularly when you have certain multi-layer um uh, uh, thicknesses and things things of that nature you know of, of of the type pipe you're using is is there a specific name um that uh, or or is it just a custom pipe i don't think there's a specific name joe um yeah yeah uh, um, so so uh, so, yeah. so we would really have to have a customized um input all the way through where, where they'd have to put their own parameters in there uh that's that's something we could look at in, in the near future i guess it's a great question we we get we get questions like that particularly for uh casings and things of this nature um, yeah the, the uh question came in are the uh materials so the examples are flex steel flex pipe uh, so of force, et cetera. Okay. Uh, we we do have certain parameters for flex steel. Um, I'm not sure if we have it in 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 the uh, we'll have to take a look at you know where we are on that. Great great question. Are you doing this offshore or, or where is this being done? Almost sounds like an offshore or underwater um, application. Yeah, we can uh, <clears throat> we can follow up with uh, yeah. you know, whoever submitting that question. It's, it's a very good one because, you know, within within um, particularly polyethylene, the different pipe types we have for HDD is, you know, for fiberglass pipe, we have fiber spar line pipe, aromatic amine, uh, 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 anhydride, and aliphatic amine. And then of course we have regular polyethylene pipe. And then you have the ability to go custom pipe, but it doesn't, it, it, by custom pipe, it's just giving you the ability to make a custom OD and a custom wall thickness. It doesn't necessarily go to that uh, level of uh, custom abilities. So look, we're always looking at ways of how we can enhance this. And I uh, would like to follow up with, uh, to that question, uh, maybe offline. That's, that's a good one uh, for potential en enhancement. Um, yeah, yeah, we do have, others? we have to uh, custom, but I don't believe we could put those particular parameters in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the questions for now. All right. Um, any other, uh, we have some time left here, uh, everyone. Are there, are there any questions, outstanding questions, any thoughts, any opinions on this? Um, Anything that um, possibly we have not, uh, that, uh, that you're just thinking about, that we have not answered, et cetera. Um, anyone's thoughts and opinions on this tool? Um, anything such as that? And I can sit back and wait for maybe a few seconds for the questions to come in. Um, as we're kind of waiting for that, uh, we, we very much appreciate all you joining today for the second part of the um, HGD series here. Um, again, this will be recorded, so we can send this out to you uh, if you're interested after the call today, so you can view at a later point. We also have a recording for the, uh, the original webinar as well. So if that's something you're interested in receiving, um, just let us know through the chat bar by simply typing interested or send or <laughs> it's just it's whatever. Um, so we'll, uh, um, you know, we'll be, we'll be going through that accordingly. Um, 
So we have uh, two uh, questions that just came in. One is, uh, what is the cost and amount of users? Uh, and then this other question is on shapefile imports. Okay, I can start with the cost. Um, so the cost is uh, $7,500 per single named end user. Um, and that's for one end user. Now, um, in light of that, um, if you have other software um, that you're licensing here um, within technical toolboxes, we have bundled pricing and discounting. Um, so what I'm getting at is, is as you start licensing more software, that price gets escalated down very, very quickly. As you start adding in users, that price starts going down very, very quickly. If you do multi-year agreements, that price starts going down very, very, very quickly. Um, it also incorporates training. It incorporates support. Um, it incorporates uh, things such as that. So, uh, but the the book price, if if John Smith from Consulting LLC came over here and and said, I just want a year of this um, of this application and just give it to me. I need it tomorrow. Seventy five hundred. But like I said, there's a lot of different ways we can work with you um, for that. It's not going to be the end price you're going to pay, but just for the name price, um, that is that is what it is. Um, and uh, it looks like the question on the shape file import. Um, uh, looks like what data would you import from CAD per um, to a shape file then imported? Uh, just profile line work, topo profile, gas main profile, et cetera. So a couple questions. Um, so I, I, I'm curious as to this question uh, pertains to um, if you have a CAD file and you're wanting to get that to a shape file or, or whatnot, what is, what is actually imported? So I'm going to try to answer that to, my, to the best of my abilities in a two-part kind of way. Um, right now, when you're uploading a shape file, it's it's only it's only uh, importing the the topo or elevation profile. Um, so it's only going to be entering uh, uh, importing the elevations. Um, so you know the height of the elevation and the length of the elevation. So that's when you enter in a KML file. That's all it's going to be entering right now. Um, now, I did mention in here, and I don't know if that's what this question is pertaining to, um, when we provide the ability for you to import eventually a CAD or DWG file, what all is going to be imported? Well, in regards to this question, it's going to be everything. That is our goal, which it's going to import the profile. It's going to import, and it's going to import the borehole profile. So both the elevation profile and the borehole profile. It will import the topography, um, uh, the length, the heights, uh, the elevation, you name it. And then it's also going to uh, be able to handle and import the borehole profile that's already been made as well. That is what we're currently working on and that's within our roadmap. Um, so that's what it's able to do. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, I'd be more than happy to follow up offline. Um, and I've kind of seen the questions roll in now. Can you export the HTD bore profile back into AutoCAD for drafting? Uh, have gotten that question about a dozen times. <laughs> so I should have been a little bit more clear. When we have the ability for you to import uh, CAD profiles, we are also going to get to the ability to where you can export it back into that as well. Right now, to shoot you straight for that question, we do not. We have one ability to export your data, and I can show you that here quickly. Um, for any of the analyses, your frack out analysis, your HGD profile, et cetera, um, if I go to my tab up here at top, uh, uh, sorry, I was I forgot Joe P is showing yeah, the data. But Joe, if you if you go to the download button, Joe, you can do it here quickly. Um, what you're able to, you see the little uh, the exporting to Excel is what I'm getting at, Joe. Oh, oh um, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have the ability for you to export or uh, into AutoCAD for drafting. The ability we give you right now is to export your analysis into Excel. So of course that's non-spatial data, uh, but you can export any of this, all of your inputs, all of your results, your borehole profile, you can export that into a working Excel document. That is the only ability we have right now. We are going to get there where you can export it back to drafting, uh, sorry, back to AutoCAD, but uh, that will come when we provide the full own ability for the software to handle AutoCAD. Right now, we're not there, but it's in our roadmap. 
hopefully that uh, addressed that question. And, and here's and, and here's the spreadsheet with different tabs. Here's the drill hole, uh, the borehole of design. Here, here's the pull load, all the information. You get it in a PDF and and also um, Excel. Your installation stresses, and then the profile data. And, and, and your question on the uh, shape file, whoever asked that, uh, you, you have to include the five or six or seven files that are usually associated with a shape file. And we do take just, as, as Joseph said, just the elevation um, of, of the shape files, you know, but that, that includes about five, five or six files that are normally so associated with that shape file. So not only KML, KMZ, but also actual shape files with, with the date uh, with the database file attached to it and the shape file itself yeah so 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 there's a series of about five or six files that that include a shape file if that makes sense thanks for the clarification there joe yeah um all righty, ladies and gentlemen, I don't see any more questions rolling in. Um, happy to stay a little longer if need be, if there are some. Um, but it looks like all of them have been addressed. Um, uh, thank you all for attending today. Um, you know, we'll be reaching out afterwards to get your thoughts and feedback. But uh, for the ones that attended both webinars, hopefully you found them to be beneficial um, from a, not only a technical standpoint, but what's out there in the industry from a software standpoint. So if there are no questions, um, we can go ahead and uh, call a meeting adjourned here, but thank you all for attending today, and uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from you or talking to you sooner. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.